chasing the police every single day. Taxpayers to be held liable as video shows police beat a woman for selling flowers with no permit. After a disturbing video captured California deputies savagely attacking a woman for selling flowers without a permit surfaced, a lawsuit was announced. By Matt Agarist, November 20, 2018. Parisia in the land of the free, if you do not pay the state before you attempt to sell a product or service to a willing customer, you can and will be extorted, kidnapped, and caged, with extreme prejudice. A video published to Facebook backs up this notion, showing a Riverside County Sheriff's Department deputy assault a woman who was selling flowers on the side of the road because she apparently failed to pay the state for the privilege. Now, because the deputy's actions were so egregious, the taxpayers are going to be held liable. The victim, Joaquina Valencia, was selling flowers outside of a high school graduation ceremony in Paris last year when the altercation began. Because she was treated like a dog and savagely attacked, Valencia announced a lawsuit this week against the department. Valencia says in the lawsuit that no human should ever be treated the way she was. He tossed me like a rag, Valencia said in an interview with NBC Los Angeles. The complaint alleges Valencia was unjustifiably beaten, shoved to the ground and arrested. The video does not tell the entire story. However, it starts as the officer is grabbing a woman who is holding multiple sets of flowers, clearly arranged for sale on the roadside. As the video begins, the motorcycle officer is grabbing the woman by the arm. The woman, who apparently doesn't speak English, is clearly terrified. Not wanting to be assaulted or otherwise extorted by the deputy for selling flowers, the woman pulled her arm back and tried to move away. She was still holding onto her flowers, indicating that she was in no way a threat to the officer. However, as the woman attempted to move backward, away from the officer, he grabbed her by her hair and attacked her. Within seconds, the officer had tripped Valencia who was still trying to protect her flowers as they likely cost her much needed money and was on top of her. The video is appalling as the cop kneels down on the woman and shoves his gloved hand over her mouth. The woman begins yelling out in Spanish as another cop joins in on the arrest all over flowers. As the officers roll her over to place the handcuffs on her, we can see just how terrified Valencia is, as she appears to have urinated on herself. The department justified the arrest, claiming that Valencia gave a fake name, Juanita Mendez Medrano, when she was detained. However, this had nothing to do with the original stop for selling flowers. And, all charges were eventually dropped against Valencia. Moreover, Valencia's attorney Ralph Rios argues that Joaquina Valencia is her true name and that she was just nervous. A lot of times when people do that, people get nervous and, she might have said a different name, she might have said something, Rios said. Some of the comments on the video are almost as disheartening as the video itself. Multiple people attempted to justify this assault and battery by claiming the woman should have had a permit. Facebook user Chuck N. wrote. Taxes, it, s called getting a permit, pay taxes, oh, and don't resist when officer gives you a ticket. Is that person even in the country legally? Another FB user, EDT, wrote. Selling flowers without a vendor's license is a crime. Petty but crime nonetheless. So is resisting arrest. Sadly, Americans are being conditioned to think that in the land of the free, people are somehow morally wrong if they try to make a dollar without first being extorted by the state. The bottom line is in modern day police state, USA exchanging goods and services is a crime unless the state gets their cut. We are told that this is for our safety and that we could all die if a brown woman sells flowers on the corner. But nothing could be further from the truth. Morality does not equal reality and the video below is more than enough evidence to prove this. Sadly, this is one of many incidents in which people trying to earn a few bucks have been attacked or otherwise kidnapped by police protecting society. In May of last year, 
the Alameda County Sheriff's Department posted a photo of a deputy arresting a man for selling fruits and vegetables on the roadside and attempted to justify the arrest. When people read the department's justification, they lashed out peacefully to let them know what they were doing is wrong. The following June, a 38-year-old homeless man was attempting to earn some honest money by providing a much-desired service to the residents of Kennewick, Washington when he was threatened with extortion and arrest by the local police department, which effectively ended his enterprise. After the Kennewick Police Department threatened the homeless man and prevented him from making a living, they took to Facebook to shamelessly brag about it. Center in Los Angeles. This is CBS 2 News at 5 p.m. Yeah. Now at 5, a tale of two tapes involving the arrest of an unarmed woman. The question right now, did deputies use excessive force? The street vendor on the tape is suing Riverside County. But the Sheriff's Department is standing by its deputies by releasing body cam video of what happened. And that video shows a very different perspective from the woman's claim of what happened that day. And CBS2 Inland Empire reporter Tina Patel is live in Riverside with both sides of the story. Tina. Well, both the county and the sheriff's department tell us they can't comment on any pending litigation. But this woman and her attorney say if you look at both videos, they show that they used excessive force. Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Joaquina Valencia couldn't hold back her tears as she sat with her attorneys this morning. It's been more than a year since a bystander shot this video of Riverside County Sheriff's deputies arresting her outside Paris High School, but she's still haunted by it. She's grabbed by the hair and pulled down and body slammed to the, uh, to the sidewalk. Mrs. Valencia never resisted, and you could tell by the video. She never struck him. She didn't have any weapons. She didn't try to run away. Valencia was selling flowers during the high school graduation ceremony back in June of 2017. According to the sheriff's department, she did not have a permit, and she and several other vendors were blocking traffic by walking into the street. A deputy's body camera was rolling as she was detained. They say Valencia, who was identified as Juanita Mendez Medrano at the time, was the only vendor who resisted when they tried to issue a citation. In a statement they released after the arrest, quote, Unfortunately, the video did not capture the other vendors cooperating with the citation process, nor did it capture our officers' repeated efforts to convince Ms. Mendez Medrano to do the same. Her attorneys say she is a U.S. citizen with no criminal record and did not deserve to be treated this way. Just because an individual has brown skin and doesn't appear to understand the English language, it doesn't mean that individual is here illegally. It doesn't mean that individual is a bad person. They hope this case will bring about changes so no one else goes through something like this. We're hoping that this type of lawsuit will at least prompt law enforcement to change their policies. Now, Valencia's attorneys admit that she gave a different name when she was stopped that day, but they say that is just because she was nervous. She was originally charged with giving a false information, but the district attorney dropped that charge. Live in Riverside, Tina Patel, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Tina. A dramatic end to a police pursuit in South L.A. Officers were chasing an SUV that was reported stolen. The driver kept going, even with four flat tires. He couldn't maintain control, and he finally spun out in the middle of Vermont Avenue this afternoon. Now, that brought the nearly half-hour-long chase to an abrupt end. The driver surrendered peacefully. That SUV had been stolen from Downey. An L.A. County Sheriff's deputy has been arrested and accused of victimizing one of the young people he was sworn to protect. It is a disturbing revelation involving a child sex crimes investigator. CBS 2's Dave Lopez is live outside of Sheriff's headquarters with more on this disturbing case. Dave. Well, behind me is the Sheriff's headquarters, as you mentioned. Uh, and the reason that uh, the Sheriff's Department says they cannot talk about it is because there is a lot more investigation to do. They are also deeply troubled by this. The many, many people I've talked to about this trouble because of who is the accuser and who is the alleged victim. Sitting in a protective cell in the L.A. County Men's Jail is an investigator with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department Special Victims Unit. He was investigating the case of a 14-year-old girl who had been raped. And now... He's accused, but not yet charged with, raping that same 14-year-old girl 
whose case he was assigned to investigate. The deputy arrested is Neil Kimball, 45 years old. He's been with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department since 1998, been with a special victims unit since 2013. He was arrested by sheriff's deputies in L.A. County late Friday night, booked into jail, relieved of duty with pay, and his bail is $2 million. I've seen through this position a lot of horrible things from kids. This video put out by the L.A. County Sheriff's Department has members of the special victims unit talking about their job and how it is their duty to protect the innocent. According to the Sheriff's Department, Kimball committed the alleged rape during the scope of his assignment with the Special Victims Bureau. Information of the alleged rape was provided by a member of the public. We have been told that the alleged rape occurred in Ventura County a little more than a year ago, early November of 2017, and that the Internal Affairs Unit of the Sheriff's Department has been investigating for more than six weeks. It was a month ago, I am told, that the Ventura District Attorney's Office became involved and also, Kimball checked himself into a medical facility in August, some three months ago, and he's remained there. And that's where he was on Friday. It took a court order for the deputies to get in order to remove him from the facility, and that's when they made the arrest. We've also confirmed that nine years ago, in early February of 2009, Kimball was involved in an investigation in which he was accused of trying to make a woman touch him against her will. The DA investigated, but felt there was not enough evidence to prosecute. Again, the Ventura County District Attorney's Office made it very clear to me that Kimball has not yet been formally charged. He is accused. The bail is $2 million. He will be transfer transported from L.A. up to Ventura County on Wednesday. And then if charges are filed, he'll face a judge with those charges on Monday of next week. Reporting live from outside the headquarters of the Sheriff's Department in downtown L.A., I'm Dave Lopez, CBS 2 News. All right, Dave, thank you. And from there, we go to breaking news in Chicago tonight. Multiple people shot at a hospital on the city's south side. Our CBS station in Chicago reports the gunman shot a hospital employee who was also his ex fiance just outside the building, and that's where she died. The gunman also shot a police officer who responded, and then he began shooting randomly, even firing inside the building before he was shot to death himself. It's not clear if he was shot by police or if he turned the gun on himself. The officer who was hit is now in critical condition, as are two other people who had been shot. Power outages and cleanup while fire crews remain on the front lines. Here's the latest on the Woolsey fire. That fire is now 94% contained, 1,500 1, structures and more than 96,000 acres have burned. And new evacuations in Malibu are lifted. We have team coverage with Garth Kemp and details on the rain, but we begin with Ermela Aragawi. She's live in Malibu to show us what's going on there. Ermela. Well, we have been told that utility crews have been working from sun up to sundown trying to get people's power back on. And if you've been driving to, through Malibu today, you will see those crews out doing the work. But we are preparing for rain, as you can see behind me, and that is expected to slow down their progress. Much of the city of Malibu is still without power nearly two weeks after the Woolsey fire started. The blaze brought down power lines and damaged transmission poles all across the city, leaving more than 5,000 residents in the dark. Without power, forget it, it's horrible. Just making sure you have enough gas in your uh, generator. And for a while there, we couldn't leave Malibu without getting locked out, so we had people were bringing in gas by boats, run it up to the donation center, and then we go get what we could. So it's been hard, very hard. Uh, well, you know, you're so dependent on it, and it really does show, you know, show you how uh, helpless you really are. Still waiting, you know, for power and whatever that that addiction is to internet and uh, cell phone service. So it's just trying to get back here has been rough. We got evacuated, and then. You know, you're, you're living um, as a refugee for a while. About 1,000 residents east of Pepperdine University lost their power for most of the day. SoCal Edison tells us they weren't impacted by the fire, but transmission poles that send power to that area were damaged. Power is expected to be back on for all of them by 8 tonight. The restaurant is being cleaned up. The restaurant's getting restocked. Fresh food only lasts so long, even with refrigeration. We had refrigeration, and so, you know, after five days, it's gone. So we get rid of it, and which we did. And we have been feeding 
people here. We've gotten food in from the Cisco company. We've been giving that to uh, first responders and the folks in Malibu and the folks here at the Cove. A spokesperson for SoCal Edison tells me after today there will still be about 4,000 people across Malibu in the dark. He says they don't know when their power will be restored. In the meantime, there will be volunteers across the city giving out sandbags like the one behind me in case of floods when the rains do come. Live in Malibu, Hermela Argawi, CBS 2 News. Well, she she brought up a very good point, the rain. That's, uh, I'm really not, uh, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. go to uh, Garth Kim for the latest on that. I'm a little worried about the people in the burn areas. Garth. Yeah, well, my friends had finally got up. They're up more where by the Latico station up north of Latico. That's where they're still. They're getting power restored. Boy, kudos to the crews. I've seen so many uh, crews out there just slinging cable. They're doing the best they can. But for us, here's what's going on. We're going to track some rain coming through the area. It looks like late Wednesday in the Thursday morning is when we're going to get this. Right now, I'm not seeing any watches and warnings. I'm taking you out here just to show you the leading edge late Wednesday evening up towards Ventura County. What we're looking for, rainfall rates over a half an inch an hour. Right now, it looks like we stay below that threshold. What we will probably see, though, as we go Wednesday night, Thursday, as the rain progresses through the area, will be road slides onto the road. So the loose debris all the way up PCH could be washed down on the road. It'll just be below that threshold that's coming in. We'll talk about the total rainfall rates. I'll explain it more detail to you coming up in just a little bit. Boy, it has been tough into the burn areas. Back to you guys. It certainly is. Garth, thanks very much. Not just going to be about the football <laughs> tonight at the LA Coliseum. Oh, no. CBS2 Sports Director Jim Hill is there, and he has details on the LA Rams and what they have planned. Jim? Jeff and Pat, this is going to be an evening that we will never forget. A huge game tonight here at the Coliseum as the Rams host the Kansas City Chiefs. We all know the game has been moved from Mexico City back here to the Coliseum. Both teams coming into tonight's game with records of 9-1. and one. This could also be a preview of Super Bowl 53. This will feature two of the league's top offenses, which are averaging over 30 points a game. Two 9-1 and one teams and coming to a head, you know, it's kind of been... Game that's kind of you've been looking at for a while now, and um, finally here. And again, to us, it's just another one. I understand they've done some good things over there, but uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a good game, and uh, it'll be fun for both sides. It's going to be two high power offense. I mean, they got a you know a new quarterback this year in Mahomes, who's been killing it. Um, all their receivers have been killing it. I mean, I mean, you can keep going on and on about their offense. They got players all around the board, and you know it's just going to be a fun game. But this will be more than a game, that is for sure, when you think about it. And thinking about tonight's game right here uh, in, at the Coliseum, there's several events that are happening and during the game. The Cal Lutheran Choir will sing uh, tonight, and they will sing the national anthem. And uh, the family of fallen Ventura County Sheriff Ron Hellas, who died in the Thousand Oaks shooting, will light the, uh, the, the Coliseum torch. Also, the Rams and Chiefs will wear hats honoring first responders, and the Rams and CBS2 and KCOL9 will present a check for the United Way and Greater Los Angeles Fire Refund. And, of course, moments ago, I spoke with Ram CEO Kevin Dimoff about tonight's events. We view this as if there was ever a week for a game to come back to Los Angeles. This is a chance for this community to rebuild, heal, and come together in a way that Los Angeles usually doesn't have that opportunity. And I think that's why we've sold 76,000 tickets tonight, the most we've sold since any game, since our first game back against the Seahawks. I think this community wants to be here tonight to help celebrate all who kept us safe. All right, there's lots going on out there, and I can't wait to see about that check presentation. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It really is. Yeah. Well, ahead here at 5 o'clock, an elevator plummets 80 floors after cables snapped. What a rescue it took of those people who did survive the plunge, and then they were stuck inside. Yeah, well, plus a hero behind the wheel, how a school bus driver saved dozens of stranded kids and teachers from the fast-moving flames of the deadly campfire. And then putting your dog in danger over the holidays. Two on your side, revealing why you might want to think twice before using a popular pet sitting app. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Cop Watch. I am using any video here with under fair use if you uh, have criticism, reporting, teaching, etc. And please donate. I do not make money from YouTube. And uh, there are different ways to donate in the uh, video links. Thanks.